Hi, Pack fans. Welcome back to the Zoom Mobile. I'm Jeff Gravely, joined now by NC State head baseball coach Elliot Avent, the winningest coach in NC State Wolfpack baseball history. Coach, I've been playing this little game, all right, with all the people that I've interviewed. What you been doing? How you feeling the time? Well, it's hard. I've, I've seen a lot of interviews. Rod Brendamore is playing with his kid all the time. So, you know, he's got Skyler there, and he's playing with Brooks. and he, He's got a lot to do, right? He's got that court out there. He's having a ball. And uh, people do different things, chores around the house that you put off, things you enjoy doing. And, uh, like, I like to get out there and chop wood. I love a fire, so I keep a co fire going all the time I'm home. And uh, so you chop wood. But basically, you're doing things that uh, you, sh you sure would rather be playing baseball. I wish the wood was piled up. I wish I didn't have a fire. I walked on the grass the other day of the field, and I looked back at the stadium, and we all knew we know we need a new baseball stadium. And all of a sudden, Doak Field at Dell Park looked pretty daggone good to me. You know what I'm saying? And I thought, hey, I'll never say anything about the field again. Eh, maybe I will. But anyway, I won't say as much about the stadium. And uh, as D told me, every loss mounts as you get older. And uh, they start to build up. But uh, I thought about V, you're right. It, it actually happened. But I don't know if a loss is going to bother me nearly as much as it did at one time. It'll, it'll get to me, but I'll be glad we're still playing. How in the world does Elliot Avent fulfill his baseball need? Here we are in April. Your team's not playing, and the majors aren't playing either. Since I could pick up a bat, since I knew what a ball was, probably five years old, six years old, there's never a day gone by that I haven't had something to do with baseball. And uh, so you're talking about <clears throat> more than 50 years, and uh, and – you just – I told our players – I had a Zoom chat with all our players on Tuesday, and I told them all how much I was proud of them because the character our kids – Jeff, I knew the character. I told Coach Hart and Coach Chrysler every day, the kids y'all recruit are unbelievable. You know, matter of fact, you probably should call their parents and thank them for what a great job they've done of raising these kids. And you know – you never know about true character until something happens that reveals character. And as I'm talking to these guys on the phone, the character of our kids and how they're dealing with this, because you would think at 18, 21 years old, you could be a little bit selfish. Why is this happening to me? It's all about me. The character and the insight that our kids are revealing from this just makes you proud. And, and I kind of revel in stuff like that. And, yes, I miss the game. But as much as I miss the game, Jeff, the thing I've realized, I miss our players even more. I really like being around players. How great is that, that the players can teach their coach something in this instance right now? I think that's phenomenal. That's, that's Players always teach coaches anything. I'll never forget the great Mike Martin, the all-time legendary coach in our game, winning this coach in college baseball. We had a shortstop one time named Jonathan Diaz. And we had a, a, a second baseman one time named Ramon Corona. Uh, who's A-Rod's nephew, and both Miami kids. And Mike was struggling one time in the middle infield catching the baseball. And I remember even at BP, he was out there working with his players. And he came up to me and he said, E, what do you, what do you teach Ramon and Jonathan Diaz? I said, well, coach, I pat Jonathan Diaz on the butt and say, go get him, kid. And I, I, I kind of tug on Ramon's shoulder and say, hey, go have some fun. And he looked at me and shook his head. I got it. I got it. You don't teach them anything. They teach you. And the great ones do. You know, considering the start that you guys had, 14 and 3, ranked anywhere from 8 to 18, you had guys mashing the baseball. Patrick Bailey leading the way with six home runs and three grand slams. And Devontae Brown, who didn't hit a homer at all last year, already had five this year. Nick Swinney, 4-0 and with an ERA of 129. How good could this team have been? I know we've played a lot of what-ifs in this scenario, but how good do you think this team could have been? It's like every, everybody right now that can say what, what would happen. You know what I'm saying? We can all play that game. And rather than going there, because we can always say how good we were, but I, what I liked about this team, because we all know it's tough and we know in our league and our non-conference schedule, you, the losses are going to pile up, and it's a tough to get to where you want to go. The only thing I can tell you, every year, I think my dad, who's 93 years old, I, I actually think he lives for our baseball season. 
You know what I'm saying? He watches every game the Yankee play, Yankees play on TV, and he lives for our season. So every year, every time I see him, I don't care if it's October. I don't care if it's July. How are you going to be next year? And I always tell my dad, Dad, I think this year we're going to win the national championship. I think it's our best team ever. He, just to give him something to look forward to. So I don't know how we were going to wind up, Jeff. But at NC State, all I know is the consistency of this program, which was built by Coach Esposito and then uh, carried on by Ray Tanner. The consistency of NC State baseball is going to put you in a situation to win a national championship every year. And if you keep yourself in that situation, then one day it's going to happen. You've already done something special this year. Uh, I believe it was March 25th. The number 26 goes up on the outfield wall for Chris Combs. Talk to me about how that day was special. It was with you and Ryan and Chris's dad, Francis, to get to do something like that and honor the number. That was special to me personally. You know what the uh, Chris Combs means to me. You know what the Combs family means to this entire community at NC State University. And we actually thought about retiring Chris's number. And Fred Demers and Boo Corgan came up with a great idea. I thought if you honor it, then somebody can wear that jersey every year, and that 26 patch will be up there for whoever's commentating the game can talk about it, and it'll just mean so much more. And I thought, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So that's just why we decided to go that direction. And all I know is Chris Combs, Ryan got him in the car the other day and took him to the third base side where it sits up and let him see that 26 out there. And Ryan called me, and Chris said, Coach, I, I can't even tell you what Chris said, but he was so happy that he could look up and see that 26. And, you know, it just made, it just made me feel awesome. So what characteristics does a player have to have to earn the right to wear number 26? One is he has to love NC State. You know, everybody comes here. They come here to get a college education, but they come here to play baseball. And the opportunity's there. And they know it's a great program and they know they have a chance to win a national championship. But Chris loved NC State, just like me. Since he was old enough to know what sports were, his team was NC State, and there wasn't a second team. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like I kind of like Duke and I kind of like, you know, Wake Forest. It was NC State and nobody else. Yeah. And uh, so, first of all, that person's going to have to love, have a deep love to NC State. He's going to have to be a great player. He's going to have to be a great leader. He's going to have to be selfless. You know what I'm saying? He's going to have to want to win more than his own success that day. If we win 2-1 to one and he goes 0 for 4, you know what I'm saying? Or if we win 6-5 to five and he's a pitcher that came out in the third inning and didn't factor in the decision, winning the game is the only thing he's going to remember on the bus until he gets back to the hotel room or back to his apartment and says, gosh, I went 0 for 4 today. But it's going to take him a while to remember that because – He's going to have to want to win more than anything. That's what Chris Combs represented to me. Well, I don't know that anybody loves NC State more than you, Elliot. I always love spending time with you, and you've helped me out today, and I think you will help out a lot of people. Your message to them via your players, we're all going to be okay after this, and baseball will return one day. Uh, everybody's be be okay. And I'll tell you what, I did a PSA announcement for the doctors and nurses and I'll tell you, my sister was a nurse for 40 years, and according to her patients that I talked to and her doctor, she was the best nurse since Florence Nightingale. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I, I, I want to say again, whatever we're feeling and whatever we're going through. And like I said, when I talk to our players, I'm so proud of how they're viewing this. And they don't look at it as a sacrifice. They look at it like I do and like you do. The world's going through something right now. Why should we even think about what we're missing but to all the nurses and doctors, again, who are putting themselves on the line, I just can't say enough about how much we appreciate you, how much we pray for you, and how much we thank you for everything you're doing.